UFC Vegas 93 is in the books and it was one of the worst cards I've ever seen, but I managed to escape with a profit. You even had another anti-climatic main event, but instead of a ref stoppage, it was an injury. Um, so all types of mess on this card. Little, you know, one TKO on the whole card. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's the new gloves or what, but we're going to be recapping the fight. So let me know in the, in the comments below if you cashed any good bets or if, you know, what you thought about the card. I'm, I'm sure it's pretty unanimous. It, it wasn't a great card, but I'm going to be recapping them all. So let's start at the bottom of the card, man. First fight of the night, we had Josephine Knudsen taking on Julian Pilastri. Uh Yeah, I mean, Knudsen was the better striker. She was uh, kicking her to the body with that teep uh, over and over, <clears throat> kind of dictating the range with that. Uh, Pilastri was able to get a couple takedowns, do some good work, especially at the end of the first. Man, if she had some more time there, it could have got dangerous. But Knudsen's legit on the feet. She's going to have to work on that ground game that takedown defense, but she's definitely a problem. Pilastri is tough. Um, just a little a little basic on the feet. Knutson gets it done via decision. <clears throat> exactly how I picked. I did have the over bet on that, which cashed. It was supposed to be parlayed with Tagir. Obviously, that fight got canceled, so we cashed a straight bet. We move on to the next fight. We had Shailan, Nerdenbeke taking on Mel Costa. Uh, Nerdenbeke was able to get some takedowns. Uh, we knew he was going to have a strength advantage here. Um, I said both guys would land takedowns. They both did. Uh, you know, Nerdenbeke did some t work on top, but he wasn't really landing a lot of damage, and Costa was threatening submissions. Um, the striking was relatively close. I thought Costa was was winning, and some people thought he was losing. I mean, it was a competitive fight, but in the end, he gets the finish in the third round again. Um, yeah, man, uh, just a better, more technical guy. Um, Nerdenbeke is, is kind of a freak athlete. But uh, super strong and explosive. But, um, you know, Mel Costa just better. Um, so gets it done. Good good choke. Um, good to see one of the few submissions or one of the few finishes on this card. But we had another one in the next fight. We had Weston Wilson taking on Jack Asaragi. Ah, oh, man. You know, I picked Saragi, but I did say if you're betting it, you got to go dog or pass. You know, I, I, I punked out of the, of the dog pass and, you know, sucks as soon as they went to the ground i was like man i knew i should have took a dog pass here jack Sergey is just a clown no like a little i don't mean like he's not a good fighter no he's a pretty solid fighter he's just a clown like he just fights crazy he did have karma coming though because weston wilson was a gentleman about it and didn't really talk any you know didn't really say much about it but you know Sergey. well he did say something but he didn't blame Sergey. uh but Weston Wilson was laughing about how he doesn't typically touch gloves, and then the fans gave him crap in his last fight and said, oh, you got knocked out because you didn't touch gloves. Well, in this fight, he tried to touch gloves. Sergey just tried to blast him through the glove touch and knock him out. Uh, it was He threw a devastating right hand that just barely whiffed, hit like skimmed his head. Uh, Weston Wilson able to get him to the mat, submit him. Once he put him in that triangle, I was like, oh, it's over. Uh, I was literally just watching him like, oh, that's GG. Uh, he could fight all he wants. It's over. It's fully locked in, and this is what he does, and they're not even sweaty yet. So, easy win by Weston Wilson. Uh, you know, hey, good to see him get it done, honestly. Like, if if one of my picks had to, especially that didn't cost me any money, if one of my picks had to fail, I was glad this one did. There was one more I think I was happy to uh, miss wrong, or, you know, pick wrong uh, on the card somewhere. Was that this? Was not my thing in the last fight? Let's see. Next up, we had Gabriela Fernandez taking on Carly Judice. Um, yeah, I had the over in this fight. It did cash. I had the fight goes to decision, like minus 155. Um, straight bet. I don't usually lay chalk like that, especially in women's MMA, but I really did think people were overestimating like the chance of this finishing. There was, I'm not, there was some sweaty moments, though. Fernandez hits like a truck, and this was a close fight. Judice, some people thought Judice won. I thought Fernandez clearly won, but I did think it was competitive. She had Judice really hurt a couple times. She did get tired. I talked about her gas tank. You know, she had the power advantage. We knew that. She hits like a truck. Uh, Judice is tough, though, man. This girl's only got like five pro fights. I think she's pretty legit. Um, both these girls, honestly, this was one of the best fights on the card. Honestly, I think this was probably the second best fight on the whole card. Um, I had a fight of the night until a fight we're going to be talking about here soon. Um, but next up, we had Nate Menez taking on Jimmy Flick. Man, this fight sucked. Uh, I didn't have anything bet. 
My God, Nate. You know, it is weird. I'm not one to really speak on these type of things often, but it was weird seeing the overs get hammered like hours before the fight, and then Nate Maness comes out here and doesn't like. I mean, I did know that. That's why I was like tempted to throw some on Flick by Sub or something because I was like, Maness does doesn't have a high fight IQ. He could do something dumb, but. You know, hey, whatever, you know, you would, he just didn't look like he even attempted at any point try to finish Flick. Maybe he watched a Gordon fight and was like, you know, I'm just not going to give him a chance to win. But, man, this is a fight to add to the highlight reel, man. You should have knocked Flick out. I'm sorry. Especially once it got to, like, the second half of the fight. I'm just like, dude, the submission threat's no longer really super there. I mean, it's always a little there, but it's like, come on, man. Like, not doing yourself any favors here. But hey, you did get the dub, so congrats to Maness. It's just, you know, yeesh, yeesh. Not, not a great fight. Another not great fight, man. I'm not going to lie to y'all. You guys know, hey, I watched every fight. I enjoyed watching the fights no matter what, and I'll never complain. But I'm just caught, got to call like I see it. This card really, and I was saying before the fight, before the fights on paper, especially, Especially before we lost, you know, my favorite fight on the card, the Van Ulenbekov. I was like, this is like one of the best Apex, if not the best, best Apex card, you know, on paper before it started. Just the fights didn't play out like that. They weren't entertaining. And this fight wasn't either. No takedowns on either side. Uh, just lower level striking, you know. Quinlan, the guy you thought would have a speed advantage here. You know, I did pick Fugit and Fugit won. I thought he rightfully won. You know, he was just landing more. I didn't need to see the strike totals. I, I mean, I did see them, and they confirmed what I already knew, but Quinlan just wasn't doing anything. You know, throwing some leg kicks early, then abandoning them. Fugit just out volume in him and uh, gets it done. Adam Fugit in a boring decision, but uh, hey, it is what it is. Split, but I thought he deserved to win. Next up, man, my God. This was the uh, the only bet of the, of the night that I feel like I truly... Uh, well, no, I won't say that, but, you know. I, I, I missed out on this. Um, I had the under, uh, or I had the fight doesn't go to decision. Um, yeah, I mean, there were so many chances. Azu had him in several chokes. I think, honestly, Johnson was saved by the bell there at the end. That one looked like it was over, but... Uh, maybe it was got closer because he knew it was a, coming to the end. Whatever. Johnson actually had been a crazy triangle at one point. Honestly, like I'm always glad to see these dudes miss weight or I mean lose when they. I mean he did make weight, but I just mean you know like dude, what are you doing at flyweight, brother? Like you're a big lightweight. Go up, man. Why are you trying to be like 70 pounds bigger than everybody? It's not that much, but he is like 40 pounds bigger than every flyweight in there, but. Yeah, I mean, Almabayev got it done. He does, you know, have some holes in his game for sure. But uh, Johnson's pretty dangerous, so hey, getting out of there, you know, getting it, getting the win is most important, and he did that, you know. Can't take too much away. It just wasn't, it actually wasn't the worst fight, but, you know, you, you would have liked to see a finish. <clears throat> Next up, man, I was so tempted because the day of the fight, Brady, Brady Highstand, Garrett Armfield, Garrett became like a minus 230 favorite like the day of and I'm like so tempted to play Brady but I laid off I don't like to make these last minute bets I try to stay away because those will usually end up being the ones I end up uh, missing but um you know in the end yeah I mean it was a good fight this was fight of the night in my opinion I actually didn't even look at uh it did it did win performance of the night and as it should um yeah I mean I thought uh it was it was a good it was a good fight back and forth, man. Garrett had him hurt several times, dropped him at one point, had him just rocked all over the place. But this kid Brady's a dog, man. Both these guys are, are dogs, but I will say like Brady, yo, my boy Bam Bam, this dude really is. And what is he? You know, he's like five and zero in the UFC now. So uh, I mean, he lost that contender series fight to Ricky Tercio. Oh yeah, I mean three and zero in the UFC. Um, yeah, I mean he was five and zero. Before and I honestly thought he won the Ricky Tercio, including the Ultimate Fighter. He'd be six and zero because I honestly thought he won. That's why I was getting five and zero. <clears throat> I really thought he was. Uh, he beat the uh, Ricky Tercios. So I mean, this kid's on a run. Honestly, twenty five. He's he's got a great gas tank. He gets these late finishes. Good grappling. He's a, he's pretty hittable, and he did get rocked, but he shows, man. He'll recover. He's tough. There's no quit in him. So I like Brady. Um, hey, man. 
Wish I would have took that underdog bet, but if you did, congrats to you. Um, and another underdog cash in the next fight, man. Lucas Almeida, Timmy Kuamba, man. Lucas Almeida put a beating on him. I wanted to click it to see if he won a, uh, like a performance bonus or something. But, uh, yeah, I mean, um, Lucas Almeida, man, came out dropped him in the first. Kuamba had a good third round, started to take over a little bit. But <clears throat> Almeida had just done too much, too much damage. Dropped him a couple times. Um, even in the grappling, like, was held his own. But they mostly strike. Um, yeah, Almeida did a good job, man. I, I thought about taking him inside the distance only, like the finish only. So it would have just been a push. Didn't take it. Ended up not playing the fight. When the line got crazy, I thought about playing him as an underdog. But, you know, he didn't. I just decided to stay off. And it is it is what it is. I didn't feel as bad about that one. Um, Kawamba fought pretty tough. But, uh, yeah, good, good performance by Almeida. And then we had the co-main event. Um, man, Miles Johns versus Douglas Silva to Andrade. Is there really people out there who thought that Silva won? Like, in what world? Maybe he, he won, what, what was that, the second round? I can't remember what round that was. But, you know, he might have won one of the rounds. But to think he won two of those rounds, dude, he, he didn't do anything. Like, he didn't do anything. Dude's tough. He's got a chin. He ate a couple bombs. He landed a couple good shots, too, but... In what world did he win two of those rounds? Now, I did have John's bet, plus 100. It ended up closing, like, minus 150 or something. My God. I, would, I wouldn't have bet it at that point, to be honest. That's probably about what I, what I would, would have lined Miles John's, like, minus 150. But, um, like I talked about in my video, which I stand by. And I thought he clearly won two of the rounds. I mean, yeah, I knew Miles John's, and that's why I almost bet him by decision or decision-only prop. Um... Because Miles Johns is is the type to put himself in competitive fights, and he do, he doesn't separate a ton. But he is now nine and zero to the decision. I didn't think there'd be a finish on either side, and so then I'm gonna go with the guy who's just better at winning rounds, and that's Miles Johns, and he proved that, and he clearly won at least two of those rounds. I honestly thought he might have won all three, but I think there was actually a second, like the second round. I can't remember what round where Douglas might have stole it. He had him he had him hurt. I think it was the knee. Uh, I don't know. The fight wasn't that entertaining. Um, but, you know, I thought he clearly won. I was not scared, even with how terrible these judges are. And then we moved on to the main event, man. And I bet him, uh, Alex Perez, this would have been just a, made a, a good night, a banger night. Um, but, you know, had the knee injury. I gotta say, man, there's some idiots out there who are like, Tyra, oh my God, don't get me started. The commentary, oh my God. They were acting like Tyra, Tyra was destroying Perez and he lost the first round. He clearly lost the first round. Perez was landing the better shots. Tyra landed a couple good knees, but he would clinch him up. He'd land two good knees in the clinch and eat like three shots of the body and like two shots up top. Perez was the faster guy. Tyra was whiffing some right hands that I was like, whoo, don't get hit by that, please, Perez. But, you know, Perez was quicker. He was landing good shots, a couple good leg kicks. I was, ha I was feeling confident. And, hey, you know, when he got to the back, Perez was defending well. People were like, was that a submission? Oh, my God, dude. If you say that as a genuine question, you're good. But if you're like, that was a submission, bro. He meant to break his leg. And the commentary was really, like, alluding to that. It's crazy to me how good Dom Cruz and Michael Bisping were as fighters and how little they know about, like, or are they biased? Or what is going on? They say some of the dumbest stuff. And I like both guys. I'm a big fan. Genuinely, like... I argue to this day, Dom Cruz is the bantamweight go. People will seriously try to argue that. But, like, sometimes Dom Cruz is like, this is a mirror match when it's like a grappler versus striker. He was saying that all night about matchups that made no sense. Like, you give DC so much crap about not watching tape. Are you watching tape? Because this is not a mirror match, Dom Cruz. One guy's tall, the other guy's short. One guy's a wrestler, the other guy's a striker. Nothing about this is a mirror match. Do you have, like... Uh, do you think that means something else? I mean, you'd think it'd be pretty self-explanatory. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a Dom Cruz fan. I'm also a Bisping fan. But, like, glazing, doing backflips on it during this fight. Oh, Tyro with the clean knee break. Like, and then, oh, my God. Why did I not lead with this? Michael Bisping on the post-fight said, that was one of the cleanest performances I've ever seen. Brother, he lost the first round, was arguably losing the second, gets to the back, fair to him, and then the dude has an injured knee 
At, oh, and I pokes him twice. And you're like, cleanest performance. Nothing about that was clean. Now, respect to him. Again, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Tatsuo Taira. He's one of my favorite prospects. It was never a, I don't think he's good. It's a, I think it was too much too soon. And I think Perez proved that. And if they fought next week and oh, Perez's knee was fine, like it, it, it he didn't it just injure his knee, and they rebooked it, the same exact matchup, and they were just go running there again, I'm taking Perez. And I'm taking Perez even if he wasn't plus 190. I'd take him at even money. Perez is the better fighter. But at the end of the day, things happen. And respect to Tyra. Uh, hey, he can't pr- control that. It was a good performance at the end of the day, like, or it was a good win. But the performance, cleanest performance ever, like, relax. Now, give him Makayev. I'm down because it's not like Makayev's win over Perez was good either. I thought he lost that fight. But, uh, yeah, I mean, 16-0, and 0, I'm down. Makayev versus Tyra. Let's get it. Winner gets a title shot. The division needs new blood. But, uh, yeah, I mean, um, Jesus Christ, Michael Bisping. Doing absolute backflips on it. Relax, dude. I don't know if they're in his earpiece like, yo, we need to build this guy up. And, like, they should build him up. Even though he needs to go back to the bowl cut. This hair, I could say what he looks like, but I don't want to. But, like, the bowl cut was sick. He looked like a freaking, like, Dragon Ball Z character, bro. But, like the video. Let me know in the comments what bets you hit. What you thought about the card. Uh, Give me your take on the main event. And uh, I appreciate you guys, man. Fun event next fight. Or next card next weekend. I am I'm stoked. I got a couple bets already. I got a uh, I got a a fiery take for the main event and a big bet on it. I will catch y'all then. Until then, click the subscribe button and uh, hope you made a million bucks. Peace.